and I'm joined by Aaron Grace of Web Rivers Meet. How are you guys doing? Really good. Great yeah, to speak good, to you again, Lee. No, always good to speak to you again. Speaking of that, thanks, guys, because you're now back in the lead as my most interviewed guest. It seems to be uh, going back and forth between you and Troy, uh, Troy Redfern. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> so you, with, another, with this one in the can, you're back in the lead. So thanks for that. <laughs> neck and neck with yeah. Troy. That's happy with that. <laughs> There's worse people you can be neck and neck with. Oh, right, yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, thanks for your time. I know you got the the reef tour started off this week. How's that all going? Because I saw a couple of weeks ago that Jack had had a head injury or something. Is that still? Yeah, um... yeah. We um, we saw on social media that he um, had a head injury. So the mm. first dates were cancelled. Yeah. Um, but it seems like these dates are going ahead. So we're off to Portsmouth tomorrow. Uh, Portsmouth Thursday. on Thursday. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, we're really excited to get into it. So um, and thankfully he he seems like he's well enough to to continue, which is great. Yeah, well that's good because after you know the recent um, relatively similar story with Danny Bays of Thunder, where he really did himself an injury. I was absolutely that was recently in the press, and then you heard about Jack. It's a bit concerning to say the least. Yeah, yeah definitely. Totally, yeah. yeah, musicians, we need to be more careful out there. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough good of them out there. We need to get. We need to keep the ones we got. You know. Yeah. <laughs> now with with Ozzy having to throw the towel in and everything, all the you know, you start. You need to keep the ones that are still doing it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um. So you guys recently um announced your new single, "Play My Game," to the first one off the off the third album. Was that out September? The new album coming out September time. That's yes, that's right. Yeah, we're looking at um sort of all, like, late half of August and September. We haven't so, we, haven't we haven't fixed the date no. yet. We. Okay. We're waiting on vinyl and stuff, so we can't sort of fix a date, but that's around then, yeah. Yeah. So it was already getting good results. I saw it was already back on for another one for you guys for Classic Rock Track of the Week. Uh, I know. Yeah, we've always had great support from Classic yeah. Rock. We're really lucky. Did you um, approach this album any differently to the other three? I mean, it's obviously, you had a great first album, but obviously that came out during the lockdown period when you guys probably wouldn't, I guess you didn't get to tour that properly, the first record. No. No, not at all. No, because we'd already released um Seven Grace came out in the November, our tour kicked off in like the April. So we had two albums and two EPs to go out with at that point. Yeah. So it was a real mix of all of them. But funnily enough, we were actually sitting here now working out our set list for the next <laughs> tour. Yeah. And it's crazy because a lot of them I think are, are like really early. It's <laughs> some of the really early stuff we're throwing in. Yeah. from the new album yeah but um it's quite cool because we still listen back to the older stuff and we're like nah let's put it in yeah we've <laughs> so, got to do this yeah. one we've got to do that one yeah totally that's nice so you, you approach the third album i mean i'm guessing with the second album you had the sort of classic pressure of, of, of the debut that did really well um on you guys did you feel that so much with the third one or did you feel like by you know the first two being well received so you've sort of built your fan base up and people trust you what you're going to do did you feel that gave you the room to sort of you know going to areas that you weren't going into before as such and stretch your legs a bit yeah I think like the first album um was pretty much we just wanted to um do music that we, we were creating at the time that we were feeling and things like that and then the second album was very much a pressure because the, like you say the first album got such a good response with Fire Free we thought this next album has got to be as good if not better than the, this other one um but this third album was very much a case of um I think the pressure was off, really, to be fair, um, but we feel that it has evolved quite a lot from the last album. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it, there was definitely pressure. Well, I mean, there was no expectation at all with the first album. No, no. one knew who we were. Mm. And I, so I remember being in the studio and saying, I think we need to get some PR for this because I think it's going to be really good, you know. And so there wasn't there was that bit of pressure, but there wasn't like a... Um, our supporters are going to listen to it and critique it and compare it so this the second one was there was definitely mm -hmm. we sort of realized how much um that kind of pressure can can stem your creativity if yeah. you let it so we we sort of learned a lot through that process and then with this maybe some of that helped with this next this last album we've just done we just didn't yeah. feel it we were like no let's just open up and go for yeah, it yeah yeah don't feel the pressure don't let it take over type of thing mm. yeah. that's cool i mean you guys obviously had like the fan side of support really early on i remember before i heard you i um joe as you know my wife does um art and so she was uh, at an art fair and i was chatting to a guy there and he's like so was saying to me oh you know do you do, no, no i don't do art mate no you know mine would be a blooming stick man if i did anything and i'd <laughs> And I'd, and I'd cop that up as well but 
Um, and he was sort of saying, what do you do? And I'm sort of saying about my normal job, but also saying with stuff with radio show and 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 with my own festival and everything. And uh, he said, oh, have you heard When Rivers Meet? And I hadn't heard you guys at that point. And I was like, no, oh, man, wow. I haven't heard them. And he's gone, oh, if you like this and you like that. And he was mentioned all the right things for me. So, <laughs> uh, you know, if you like this, you like that, you'll, you'll like these guys. And I was cool. Wow. I was like, no. I'll try and check them out. And then sort of coincidentally, within the sort of week of this bloke saying it to me, Pete sent over the, the first stock track I heard from you guys. Um, yeah. And I was like, oh, that's, uh, and it was nice to say you that point, because normally, you know, with, when bands rising through the ranks, you normally hear something, you don't normally get catch a buzz before you hear them sometimes. But it was nice to see it that way around. So you guys have had that that foundation, I feel like, throughout all of it. Did you feel that burn up through lockdown more because people were, you know, stuck indoors and they're now just stuck with you because obviously they like what you do? Yeah, I mean, definitely because of the live streams, mm. we definitely mm. sort of built up a good community through that. Um, and and I think we sort of made a lot of friendships with people as well. Yeah. We sort of, um, like people were looking forward to coming on the live streams every week. We were looking forward to it. So um, we kind of, there's like a weird bond with people that went on those early live streams yeah. and stayed throughout. Yeah. When we still see them, like, but we can name a lot of them, you know, that were there right from the start. And when we see them, it's we sort of wonder if we're ever going to feel that amount of connection with people who just find us. So, um, yeah, it was like a really sort of it's such a weird time. Yeah. And I think it probably happened with a lot of people as well, mm. where you sort of made it was such different circumstances, different relationships were formed. Mm. Um, yeah, that probably and if that makes any sense. And, and I think one of the things was as well, because. Um, when we were doing the live streams and you see people's names coming up, you know, consistently every week and things like that. But we didn't know who those people were until we, or we couldn't put a face to their, to the name, should we say, until we met them on tour when they come to see us live. And it was so cool. And it was, it was just so surreal because you know, you know, these people have been talking to them and stuff like that, but you don't know what they look like. And now, you know, now we do. And it's just, oh, mate, it's awesome. And also, like yeah. people were so connected to all what we were doing, they yeah. knew everything about what had happened. And, yeah. Um, yeah, that's what social media. I mean, it's not great for everything, you know, but it's so great for other things. Yeah, yeah we we really feel like we've been able to use it for the positive aspects of mm. it, and like sharing our music and getting it out there. It's just been amazing. Yeah. Yeah, there is a lot more. I mean, yeah, we we we're all too keen to focus on the negative of social media, and there is that without doubt. I wouldn't I wouldn't question that, but equally there is. You know, my first sort of wasn't done as well as it has without without it. You know, I managed to utilize that same with the radio show. You know, there's been some weird moments when I've been at festivals and other gigs and I had people come up to me going, Are you Lee? And I'm like, Yeah, you know who you are. <laughs> and like, oh, I came to just push play. And I'm like, Oh, thank God for that. I thought you were gonna hit me. You know, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, what have I done? <laughs> yeah, what have I done? You know, someone come makes a beeline for you, you kind of like, right, what's going on? Yeah. No, okay. but it's uh, it's easy to focus on on the, on the bad side of anything, but you know there, it does have its positives for sure. Mm. You, you mentioned in the tour that obviously I'll be along to Norwich State, so thank you again for that. Aaron, yeah, mate. Appreciate that, that no problem, mate. No problem. And I appreciate it. So I'll be coming to Norwich. You got Colchester Arts Centre. Uh, you got dates throughout the country, and then obviously you're going off with uh, Reef as well as we're talking about. Is yeah. there you got some festivals like festivals lined up as well? I knew, haven't you? I've seen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've got like Steel Steel Fest Festival, Steel House, uh, Steel House Festival. Sorry. Um, we've got Old Fold again, which is great because this is the third year on a trot we're playing. They're sort of headlining for them, aren't we? So that's awesome. We're doing the Joe um, Massa Blues Cruise. Yeah, the Blues oh, Cruise. Wow. Yeah. yeah, which is going to be really cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we've got loads of different... Cornwall Rocks and all yeah. sorts of different things. Yeah, we wanting to get further down south because they get yeah. left out a lot down there. So. Yeah. And, and not only that, we're going up north to play at Whitby as well. So that's really cool. Hi, thanks to this patron. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Cornwall Rock seems to get a good rap. I mean, yeah, like you say they get they get sort of almost ignored by a lot of acts that that end of the country, which is a bit sad. But me and Jay were in Cornwall. We were down in Hollywell, and so we weren't that far from where it was. But unfortunately for us, when we found out about it, it was it was on like the as we were driving away, it was happening basically. Oh, oh no! <laughs> like the weekend we came back and we sort of then found out afterwards, it was like, oh, we could have stayed another couple of nights and and had a good time. But no, um, I know a couple of bands have played at like these Wicked Rivers and stuff, and they were saying it's a it's a good shout. So it looks like... Oh, people... nice. I think that the local ones to us that we're doing, we're doing the um, the, the Cambridge Rock Festival. Oh, again. Yeah. So that's really cool. Um, and the Bewers um, Festival as well. So I don't know if I said that right. Bewers, 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 yeah. Bewers. I'm never sure how to pronounce it either, Aaron, mate. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
But yeah, the Cambridge ones, I've been down there a few times. Unfortunately, I'm not going to make it this year because it clashes with, we've just pushed play, unfortunately. So oh, I'm right. Okay. Know, like alone, unfortunately. Well, not unfortunately, I love doing it, but <laughs> uh, so it's just unfortunate afterwards when I have no idea what's going on. And uh, it normally takes me a few days to get get back on top of myself sort of thing. But <laughs> now, Cambridge Rock Festival is a good shindig. I know the guys over there, they put a good one mm. on. I like to say I've been to it a few times. There's only day clashing that's going to stop me this year. But uh, you've got aerial supporting on you this run of dates of your own, haven't you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we um, have. Yeah, we met Ariel. Um, we have the same PR person, and um, so we've been kind of following what she's been doing. We went to see her supporting Beth Harp, um, yeah. and we instantly just clicked with her. We loved her music. She played a great set, and then, like on a personal level, we really connected with her. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she's a really open person, mm. um, so it's really easy to kind of get on with her and. Yeah quite quickly like we were on the same page so just like Troy was um at yeah. our first first um tour last year um yeah so I think it's gonna be really cool yeah and so it's really important for us to like for it to feel like a nice team of people yeah. together so we, we're certain it's going to be a really great fit that'd be great I mean yeah I spoke to her must be a couple of years ago now it was when she released her is it analog girl in a digital world record yeah yeah um, yeah, and I was fortunate enough to chat to her then. And she just, like you say, such a great guitarist, great songwriter. Um, and she was really just open as to that thing. Again, Pete had sent me a, a track off that and I really liked it. Uh, and he said, do you want to speak to her? And I was like, absolutely. And I didn't know anything about her. I just heard this one song and I really wanted to talk to her. And uh, yeah, you think in those ones are like, oh, how good an interview is this going to be? Because I I'm unfortunately don't know much about you. But she was so great. And uh, so I've been waiting for her. I missed her last time around when she was over in the UK, unfortunately, for some reason. I can't remember why I missed it, but so when you announced that, I'm, I'm excited to see her on the show because I've not seen her, not seen her live yet, so it should be good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. it's going to be great. But getting back to the album though, like, did any of the processes change, or is it same people, same team, same action? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it is literally just myself, Grace, and Adam, um, our producer, who also plays bass and drums. Um, and it, the, the formula works and we always think that you know if it ain't broken don't try and fix it type of thing and it yeah we just lived in the caravan in the caravan isn't it in the camper van uh for nearly, nigh on three months at his studio and we just i think yeah as well um it's not even just a case of like if it's not broken don't fix it it's kind of with we've sort of spent so much time mm. together now mm. over the last few years mm. that we don't really need to well like we do we constantly nagging but <laughs> but we can communicate what we want to create with the song yeah. really easily with him because he kind yeah. of already knows where we're at so he can yeah. listen to stuff and he'll be like yes done finished we know what we're going to do with it yeah. and so he's like a really good mind reader and um it, the, the prospect of having to work with someone else and, and start afresh yeah you know it's yeah it's almost not worth like, it it's not worth it really it. not no we just we get it's just such a great relationship we've mm. got with ads now um yeah so it's always a lot of fun recording yeah, yeah like you say it's almost not worth doing anything else if you've got that relationship you've got that we all know the frustration of trying to explain something that's going on in your head when you're writing musically and it's hard to put it into words it's certainly hard to put it down on paper so yeah. it, if you've got someone that knows what you're talking about when you're talking for one of a better term, complete rubbish while you're trying to explain what the the, the noises are in your head, I wouldn't. I, I, know. Would... I mean, there, there was a point. Are you going to say? There was a point yeah, 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 where um, I add, and it, as well because he's a multi instrumentalist, like mm. he's able to actually do like he can play on the drums, he can do the bass, he can do the keys. What we are hearing, yeah. And there was a point where I was literally air drumming. He was like, and I was going, no, that's not quite what I've got in my head. And he was like, play it for me. And I was air drumming what I was wanting. And we were gradually doing it for <laughs> ages and ages. And we finally got there. Yeah, yeah. And um, it sounds great. And it, it's like, yeah, it, it's kind of, um, yeah. it's, and, it's really fun to be able to translate things like that when yeah. I am like no drummer, like I can do the two <laughs> beats and that's it, you know. But um, yeah, it's just a great relationship with him. I think every musician on this planet is scattered stuff that's in their head just to try and get the uh, rough idea. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have borrowed right. it. I know what? I've done that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think Play My Game is a good indication of the rest of the album or is there some more surprises to come? Oh, yeah, there's some more surprises to come there, is for sure. Yeah, definitely. But, I mean, Play My Game, um, we had such fun um, writing that and playing that. 
we just felt that that was the first single to release didn't we we really did so yeah and i think a lot of this so- not a lot of the songs but um we've definitely gone off a little bit of our the beaten path hmm. so um we wanted something that people are gonna instinctively hear as as us yeah and that was what we were like yeah that's a proper wm track so let's lead with that one and then kind of we just swerve a little bit as we go along and we've we've thrown in some different ideas yeah. so we want to ease people into it with the next singles yeah. and um yeah and it's just it's a banger it, yeah. it does it feels so I, much like us that yeah. you know well, this, well, this is it. Like, I'd, I'd seen in other like, interviews you've done, like you spoke to my mate Ryan and Beyond the Vibe recently. Yeah. Um, and, you know, when I saw in that when you were saying that you'd done um, stuff like you're saying off, more off the beaten track and then when I heard playing my game, I was like, not too far off the beaten track, but it sounds like no. that's more to come. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It, like Grace said, it's just ease, ease people into <laughs> just, yeah. slightly, just slightly, just yeah. slightly, uh-huh. yeah. Yeah, right. And uh, you know, we've spoken when we spoke before. You mentioned of you, you know bringing in different pedals and different instrumentation stuff. Mm. Have you brought in anything else that you haven't done on previous records? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a lot more fuzz. We ne- we didn't use fuzz before, so we were actually anti- so, yeah, we were actually anti fuzz for 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 the first two or three well first two albums and the EPs. Yeah. That's for sure because we thought. No, it's not us, it's not us. But then eventually we've kind of evolved into it. And we're like, no, we really love it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I think we were really fixed on like a, a classic mm-hmm. rock sound, guitar tone before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for some reason, that, and it's so weird how things change like this. And this is why like an album is such a like snapshot of time. Yeah. Because all of a sudden now it's the coolest thing we've ever heard and before <laughs> yeah. we didn't like it at all so I don't know yeah. how it worked but <laughs> you know, like we say it's like an evolution of sound isn't it it's, a, it's an evolution of us and where we are at that time I think yeah yeah if we'd done an album now it would be completely different absolutely <laughs> so, <laughs> who knows <laughs> But the thing, isn't it, that you, the sound doesn't come from the tools you use; it comes from you. So if you're you putting, you know, if you guys suddenly send there's a bit more fuzz on this on this record, it doesn't mean you're suddenly going to go off and do a grunge album. But it's, you know, what I mean, it's it's coming from you guys. So whether you do an acoustic record or one with more fuzz on it or mm-hmm. whatever else the instrumentation you might bring into it, it's always just going to sound like you guys because the music's going to come from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, with a bit of like cross fingers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've all crossed fingers on those moments, trust me. <laughs> I'm certainly sat there in rehearsal rooms and gone, I don't even know if this works, but it's in my head, so I'm putting it down. <laughs> Definitely. And like I say, it's about playing and it's about experimenting and just being what you want to be and, and, and doing what you guys want to do. Mm. For sure. Yeah. So is, is that speaking of that, is there any influence you wouldn't bring into when Rivers Me then? If you're bringing in fuzz, is there anything you would think that's too far? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, we, we are influenced by quite a lot of different genres, that is for sure. Um, <laughs> I, I mm. do know that I always, um, I've got a jazz dar. So oh. if anything <laughs> starts to sound jazzy, I instantly I'm like I can hear it stop it (laughs) and jazz is great don't get me wrong but it's just not my thing and as soon as I hear even like a chord progression that is too jazzy I'm like no stop (laughs) it's just not my thing so that's definitely something that's always been like that yeah um yeah that's that's a big part and I would say that like no I was never a big fan of um like brass sections but then we did actually have trumpet on the last album so yeah who knows there you go see it's all about how you use it exactly <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna yeah, wait for a, i'm gonna wait for a jazz fifth instrumental in the next record grace oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, actually, you actually retched at the thought of that grace <laughs> but you say that you say that come the next album that might all change no, it, it I, might I be it you never that's know that's one thing i don't think is going to change <laughs> <laughs> We all have our ones that just don't think it's not going to work at all. So, <laughs> so uh, what does the rest of the year hold up for you guys other than the tour and obviously the album coming out and everything else? Well, it is a case of festivals, touring, uh, the album coming out. We are going to be writing again um, this year because we, what we've decided to do, um, we're going to break it up a little bit from oh. what we've done where we've gone into the studio for like two or three months yeah. Uh, I think what we've decided we're going to do, which might work out better for us, um, just to break it down to a couple of weeks at a time and things like that. So, yeah, that's kind of the plan, to be fair. 
I think it's been difficult to, um, as things have got bigger, to kind of go in the studio and just completely focus on new music for so long because like we're independent little team and so my sister's our manager and it's quite difficult to navigate everything mm. so we're thinking and then, then then if we kind of get stressed about what's going on in the outside world and not in the studio it's yeah. taking our minds away from what Completely. we should be doing so yeah. we're thinking yeah small chunks like we're going to go in the studio for two or three weeks throughout oh. this year you know and like two or three sessions probably of that yeah. um so yeah we'll see how that how that goes it kind of be cool because instead of being a snapshot of that moment that that sort of those couple of months yeah. it's going to be like a more of a progression throughout the year so maybe it will have different vibe because yeah. we'll be going through different part different like touring Phases of the you know. year. yeah but we're also we've got some really exciting potential um gigs coming up later in the year as yeah. well so as with everything music industry it's kind of last yeah. minute and yeah. so we're just like we're just sitting tight and and open. also um we're looking at next year as well so we're still we've already started planning for next year for different things that are uh, you know the irons are in the fire should we say so we'll see wicked so how do you find you going about the sort of balancing act but how do you guys find that because obviously like you say you're an independent sort of team amongst yourselves and you know, you like you saying you're doing a lot with the the live streams and everything. But when you're in the mm. studio, how do you find the balancing act of all that? Because imagine when you're in the studio, that's what you want your focal point to be. Yeah, I mean, it, it is quite complicated at times. Um, you get a few days where you think, oh, you know, it's, it's everything is is flowing and everything is coming out right. But then, like Grace is saying, if there's other things, elements coming from the outside um, that can start affecting you and things. Um, it, it can it can not say pull you back but pull you away should we say and so yeah yeah I, I mean we've been lucky because my sister's now mm. a manager there's stuff that we would never have relinquished to anybody else you yeah. know sure. um but like having her I don't know how I would have coped without that relationship and also Stewie um Aaron's best mate now who does all that merch but there's you can't even begin to mm. say all the different things that go on. Like, um, it, it's just, it's exactly as we want it. But we have like, there's totally been points where over the last few months where we've been like, let's go for a walk and not talk about anything. Let's not talk yeah. about WRM because yeah. it feels like it's, it's all consuming. Yeah. And it has been for the last three or four years, ever, ever since Literally, things started yeah. to work out. And it is us, like, I mean, it's, I think, I think that's maybe where it's difficult because it's not work, it's our passion, but it is work. Yeah. And it's like, it's just really confusing because it's literally just all consuming. And yeah. it's kind of remembering like the other people in our life, like we can't yeah. just be WM all the time, you know? Yeah. So it is like, it's pretty difficult. Well, we're, we're kind of working on that balance this year more. Yeah, we? absolutely, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> it's not easy i can appreciate that i mean i don't think it's any coincidence that once just push plays out of the way that me and joe bugger off to cornwall for as long as we possibly can before i go go back to work you know just that that reset like you're saying about just to talk i go not talking about just push play not talking about my radio show not talking about plans for next year necessarily just just being us I mean, it's yeah. important to do that Definitely. yeah absolutely yeah yeah because it's kind of more like living in the moment as well isn't it rather yeah. than everything else that's going on yeah totally. and like you say like the relationship you know like being married as well we have to remember not remember we do remember <laughs> <laughs> don't forget that grace that's a complete focus <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like it's so intense you do have to yeah. like you know you know you know what we're talking about with what you do it's just yeah. remembering to like chill out a bit in between as well yeah and like you say just be yourselves yeah yeah uh, well, I can't wait for the rest of the record, guys. Looking forward to seeing you in Norwich. So thanks for your time once again. Been an absolute yeah. pleasure, as always, to talk to you guys. So at the beginning of the interview, you know how this works by now. It's fifth interview in. Uh, I'm going to play Play My Game at the beginning of the interview. But what song of yours would you like us to play at the end of the interview? Oh, right. OK, so so maybe it could be like what you see off of the first EP that we released back in 2019. Um, and it was actually our very, very first ever release. And we're it? putting it in the tour set. Yeah. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Wicked. I'll go with that. Well, thanks for your time, guys. Good to speak to you again. And uh, Julie, cheers, buddy. You look after you. yourself. You too, see man. you soon. Yeah, see you soon, man. <laughs>